Right, now, hepatocellular carcinoma could, from what you've been saying, have a potential new treatment on the way. Can you tell me what it is you were trying to do in the study you've just reported? So I presented the interim results of an ongoing phase 1-2 study of the anti-PD-1 antibody nivolumab in patients with advanced hepatocellular carcinoma. The presentation focused on the results of the dose escalation phase and a few patients from the ongoing expansion phase of the study. Overall, we, we were able to look at safety in 47 patients by the time of the interim analysis. And we showed that the majority of the adverse events were mild in nature, were grade one and two. Now, th this disease, these patients with advanced hep hepatocellular carcinoma would have been candidates for serafinib, for instance, in the past. 68% of the patients enrolled into the study had prior serafinib treatment. But the eligibility allowed patients who had not had prior serafinib if they refused to have serafinib as treatment. Right. Uh, the, the challenge with sorafenib is that it's the only approved systemic therapy for advanced hepatocellular carcinoma and the median survival is less than 11 months overall. So could you give me a comparison between the historical um, data from sorafenib and what you actually got treating patients with hepatocellular carcinoma, carcinoma with nivolumab? Sure, just to put things in context, the objective response rate with sorafenib is two to three percent. The response rate that we saw in this trial in 42 patients is 19 percent, with two patients having complete responses. The other important part is the durability of the responses and the patients with stable disease. So seven out of the eight responses lasted nine months or longer. 48 percent of patients had stable disease and the range is up to 17 plus months. Now these drugs are very different, they're both uh, targeting molecular mechanisms. What is the difference in fact? They're actually quite different. So sorafenib is what we call a tyrosine kinase inhibitor that has multiple targets. The, one of the most important ones being vascular endothelial growth factor receptor 2, PDGF, the RAS and RAF molecules. The nivolumab anti-PD-1 therapy is intended again to uh, enhance T-cell activity against the tumor by releasing the PD-1 immune inhibition that happens when PD-1 and PD-L1 communicate between the tumor cell and the T-cell. So why is it that releasing the body's natural abilities to fight cancer is more effective apparently in your study? Well, there, there are many potential reasons. Uh, these, these are preliminary results in a small number of patients. Uh, we are looking to validate these findings in the expansion phase. But there is a sound rationale for evaluating immunotherapy and anti-PD-1 therapy in liver cancer. This is an inflammation-associated cancer. Both hepatitis B and C, which are frequent causes of liver cancer, have been associated with higher PD-1 expression. Uh, also, upregulation of PD-1 and the ligand PD-L1 has been associated with worse prognosis in hepatocellular carcinoma. So th there is a sound rationale for why this could succeed. Now clinically, where do you think this is going? Because it is only 47 patients, Correct. So it's not a large number. Uh, is there a strong enough signal for you to be holding out clinical promise? The study is built in a way that af after the dose escalation, we have a large expansion of 200 patients, 50 per cohort, to validate the promising response and survival that we are seeing in these initial small group of patients. If the, if the signal that we are seeing is validated, uh, then this could open the door to a potentially novel therapy in this cancer. Okay, so you're not in, saying... In larger trials, of you're course. You're not saying yet then, but what should doctors then be making of the data we have, these very interesting data we have so far? Well, we have a responsibility as a community of healthcare providers to ensure that even promising therapies are well studied, that we've established the safety and efficacy. So I would encourage doctors to really refer and en encourage patients to participate in, in trials to validate the promise of immunotherapy in liver cancer. Mm -hmm. And finally, what is this telling us about immunotherapy in some of these tumors we might not have thought about using it in before? Well, this is telling us that there is broad potential for immunotherapy across tumor types. We will still have challenges down the road because not every patient will get a cure from immunotherapy. Uh, even the responses have an, end, have an end to them. 
So we'll have, we, our challenge will be to find biomarkers to better select the patients and to combine immunotherapies together to make the impact even more profound.